How's it going, everybody? Rye Bray here today, and we are back with your Kansas City Royals, ready to get into off-season number three after a successful season three where we made it one further round. Um, you know, first year we didn't make the playoffs. Second year we made it to the ALDS after winning in the wild card. This year we won two series, and that would have been a lot better because right now I would have been recording the World Series if it wasn't for the fact that we slipped into the wild card yet again. Uh, we were in position with Texas and Tampa Bay in a fight there uh, down the stretch in September to to claim the first or second seed. We did, you know, drop the ball. We had it in our hands, right? We played Texas in two series. That was huge. We even played Tampa Bay in a series, um, and, you know, we lost to them in the series, right? So winning one of these series, all of a sudden we might be the two seed and not have to um, go many, many rounds, play – how many games do we play? Yeah, we played – uh, three, five, we played seven games before getting to the ALCS. I know Toronto did the same thing, right? But still, it would have helped us because I thought we were slightly the better team against Toronto. Um, but they ended up moving on to the World Series and they now face the Philadelphia Phillies. So taking a look at the statistics for the players, right? Not a ton of at-bats to draw on, but Bobby Witt did play well, right? OPS of 890. Uh, Riley Green got on base very, very nicely. Didn't really have a ton of power. Slugging under 400 isn't great, but OPS of 756, I'm fine with that. So really what we need to find are guys that can, you know, step up in the postseason. Like Luis Arise was just not what we needed in the postseason. I'm not saying let's get rid of him, but... 217, he needs to do better. Tyler O'Neill, do we still continue to upgrade the outfield? He's got $8 million for another season. Now he's 85 overall. He looks really good. Don't want to move on from him, but we're going to need a better bat than that. Maybe it is time to move on from Doogie. I know we hit that clutch home run. He's got $8 million for another two seasons. He's been replaced by Riley Green. And just taking a look at the roster, let's go to the outfield first. We've got Riley Green. Tommy Edmond and Tyler O'Neill. Edmond signed this season. Didn't have the best postseason. It wasn't the worst postseason either, right? Considering he batted just 264. I mean, 264 is pretty good. 754 uh, OPS. You can see he batted 231. Did have a home run, four RBIs in uh, just under 40 at bat. So again, he's fine. He's more of a fielding type player rather than a hitter for me. Tyler O'Neill's fine there in the left. We've got MJ Melendez, who, again, I keep holding on to him. Uh, he's he's renewable this season if we wanted to renew him. We could move on from him. I don't know, 75. He just doesn't look like he's ever going to be anything for us. I mean, the stat distribution. He's got a cannon of an arm. Other than that, he doesn't really have too much to offer us. So, again, are we going to go into the offseason looking for a new outfielder? Perhaps somebody to bump O'Neill. Um I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the outfield is fine unless somebody's out there and we have the budget to go do it. I think the outfield might be what it is. Riley Green still got time to grow. Tommy Edmond, I'm satisfied with him. And then Tyler O'Neill's been really, really good. Outfield could be a thing we look to improve next offseason. But for now, I think we're fine. Obviously, Bobby Witt is short. Brooks Lee's going to back him up. Third, we've got Colt Keith and probably Brooks Lee as well. Uh, they can platoon at third. Second base, we got Nolan Gorman and Lewis Arise. I think what we need to find is a just a pure power bat. Like any any position. We're going to move on from Brandon Drury. Look, he looks fine. He played all right. I mean, it was a pretty poor. Actually, no, he was he was woeful. But he only bat had 240 at bats, 66 games. He was only used sporadically. But ideally not a second baseman, but somebody to just rake for us at, at the DH. I think we need to improve our DH. Vinny Pasquantino's still doing what he does there at first base, right? He had a good postseason as well. Uh, and then catchers, maybe we move on from Freddie Furman and give it over to Blake Mitchell. I feel like Furman, he's, <laughs> listen guys, he signed for one and a half million for the next three seasons. I feel like we're okay there. Closing pitcher, Jose LeClerc. I mean, he did drop off. He didn't have the greatest season. Uh, Mariano Diaz, you know, had an all right season for us as a relief pitcher. Uh, I don't feel like our bullpen's all that bad. And, you know, despite what I said about him in the regular season, Chris Paddock definitely showed up in a big way. And and Zach Gallen did as well. And look at Trevor Rogers up there in 87. Bobby Herman is at 83. Again, when it comes to the regular season, right, Asa Lacey probably next season will be the guy at, in the fifth rotation spot. So really, our, our roster is pretty set. I feel like maybe just a DH is what we need and then some better utility players. I'm not too sure. I think maybe one arm for the bullpen because the bullpen wasn't exactly phenomenal. Um you know, during the regular season, Ryan Presley probably going to just move on from him. So we need to find somebody to replace him there. 
don't really have anybody in the system. Our, our wow, our our bullpen in the system is not good. Maybe we'll adjust with that later. But you know, Sandlin was fine. Uh, Phil Matten, Barlow, Schreiber, and then we've got Diaz and Leclerc. So both of those guys are, are, are solid. And then we just need to find a replacement for Ryan Presley. I, I honestly think, guys, that the team is fine the way it is. Um, Julio Villalobos should be close, right? Give him another season. He can come up. Same thing with Ben Kaderna, uh, James Dunham, who we traded for. Um, and plus all the guys we drafted this upcoming, or this past season, right? So we'll see there. I just, you know, I look at the roster and I'm not entirely sure where I want to take a swing to improve the team, right? Nolan Gorman was kind of that swing. He's making 4.7 for another two years, Listen, if you can keep improving, I, I think one more year, right? But losing seven power against lefties is, is huge, right? That goes from 76 to 69. Not nice. Um, and, and, you know, his clutch is growing. His discipline's still good. Again, his vision is, is improved quite a bit, right? So you could see probably his on-base percentage eh, dropped off a little bit. But he did reduce his strikeouts because he, yeah, no, he, he reduced his strikeouts quite a bit. Didn't walk as much, but didn't strike out as much either. So I don't know. I feel like the team is solid. Taking a look at the standings again, we are ranked as the second best team. Power. I, I guess power. We need power. That's that's what we need. We need power. Where do we rank uh, team rankings um, in the regular season? Do they have it? No, it's just the postseason here. But home runs? Do we have it many home runs? Uh, Toronto hit the most home runs, and it's no surprise to see them in the World Series. Philly was at 10. They're fifth, right, right behind us. So maybe a bit more power for us. In the regular season, again, I can't check that now. But we're just going to go ahead, jump to the offseason, and get things rolling. Hopefully, advance another round and winning one more round next year. I mean, let's win two more rounds next year. That's the goal. And it's the Phillies that have defeated the Blue Jays to uh, to, to win the World Series. Uh, I believe this is their second in the three years we've been doing this. Taking a look at the awards, the awards, the World Series MVP. Nope, this is a three-peat for the Phillies. The Phillies have won... Every single year we've done this. It was, uh, I believe it was Phillies versus Minnesota back-to-back -back seasons, um, postseason MVP. Yeah, Twins, Twins, Blue Jays, um, Phillies, Phillies, Phillies. Right. So Philly is just a dynasty. What the hell, man? They're an absolute dynasty right now. Alec Bohm. Like, I mean, look at the powers there. I wish I could. What is, what's his postseason stats? Batted 375, four home runs, 10 RBIs, 99 clutch. So I I'm going to try and find somebody with some power and some clutch. Maybe some vision as well so that they can uh, hit some home runs like Alec Bohm did here. But, uh, man, Philly's got it cooking. It is a sad day for us Royals fans as Rivertown is going to retire due to injury. The guy just could not stay healthy. I swear to God, he had like a three-month injury every single season. And this time he tore his MCL and is going to retire at the age of 27. The name was awesome, right? So it was one that we kept looking at. But uh, DJ LeMahieu retires. Uh, David Peralta Go ahead. If your favorite player retired, let me know. We're going to con just continue here. Um, McCutcheon retired a Cardinal. Oh, that's that's so weird, man. I don't like that. Uh, and let's take a look at the Hall of Famer. It is Clayton Kershaw. Wow. Career 249 ERA is insane. P played for 18 seasons. 2781 innings pitched. Almost 3,000 strikeouts. Was four strikeouts away from 3,000. What a career. 214 and 93 insanely dominant so the good news is guys we do have 40 million just about in projected surplus 44.65 in available budget i know my head is covering it right now but 39.65 is the actual projected surplus i am going to offer scott barlow what he's asking for 2.9 for one year john schreiber wants over th about about four million for one or two years i don't want to do that considering listen he pitched well his first year, ever since then, it's kind of been getting slightly worse each year. Now, I know his FIP was really good this year. I look at ERC, too, uh, as well as the ERA. I mean, things just are getting slightly worse for him. He 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 didn't get good fielding, that's for sure, but it's just not been an improvement year over year for John Schreiber. Uh, and again, if I want to take a swing at the fences, I want to have some surplus. I do want to lock up a guy like Bobby Herman for a lot of years. Um, and I want I want to keep the core that we have together because I feel like it's only going to get better. It's, we've got a slow burn cooking right now. I really want us to take off soon. Hopefully we will with a, one addition or two. Um, and I feel like we can improve on John Schreiber for about four, maybe five million. We can get somebody better than John Schreiber. Garrett Hampson is also asking for like uh, five million for a season for or two. Again, don't want to do that. He's a 74. 
he had that one magical season his first year where he was actually pretty pretty insanely good uh even last year was 2.0 but this past season um didn't play at all didn't feature for us can play anywhere he's he's a triple a player for us at this point i'm not going to pay him a multi-million and then ryan presley at 38 is dropping off did not have a good season we picked him up because he had a great season in milwaukee could not replicate it here in uh in Kansas City, so that is that. As far as the staff goes, nobody is expiring. We are going to keep Matt Quattraro. Um, there are some good managers out there, but I don't want to waste $4 million to fire Matt Quattraro right now. He's been fine. I don't think he is the issue. Our coaching staff is really, really good, right? So next year, we're going to have to find a new pitching coach, uh, a third base coach, and, and manager. I feel like this is the perfect last chance for Matt Quattraro. He's been here for three years now. Um, this will be his fourth season with us uh, as GM. Um, if he doesn't perform this season, I feel like we can pull the trigger on him there. So not too much to do in exclusive free agent negotiation. So let's go ahead and get up to free agency. So we can officially talk to Bobby Herman and get him locked down long term. He Listen, guys, he just won the Cy Young. Uh, he won the Rookie of the Year. He made the All-Star Game. I mean, and it's his first year. Yeah, it might be a little aggressive to be giving him a nine-year contract right now, but he's our first draft pick, uh, and and he's turning out to look like a stud right now. Uh, we'll give him the yeah ninety point nine over nine years. It's exactly what he's looking for is the ten million. It would leave us with twenty nine and a half, um, and we get him till he's twenty nine. I I could do a little bit shorter. Uh, he'd be arbitration eligible after five years. Um, I guess five years at three million for him probably. Honestly, that might be the smarter move. I know I want to lock him down for long term, but under three million for five years of Bobby Herman, who knows what the heck our, our our salary and budget is going to be? Then he'll be twenty four at the end of this deal too, is what it seems like. So he'll still be arbitration eligible, I think, at the end of this deal. Sixth after the sixth year, I think he'd be free agent eligible, and that's why his ideal salary jumps up a ton. Look at that; it goes up to nineteen million a season. Um, is his ideal salary for six uh, plus years. So I think for five years, we'll just work with it and, and hopefully he can continue to become a dominant force in baseball. But I feel like five years at three million gives us a ton of room uh, to maneuver around him too. I feel like that's the smart option. Yes, I may pay more in five years, but again, who knows what the team's going to look like in five years. I'll give him three million for five years as a rotation player. Uh, can I give him a team option at the end of that club option? I think I, I, I think, does that make the fifth year a club option? I don't know. I'd probably accept it anyway. Um, but I'm just going to see if he'll take this deal. There we go. And, and we're going to offer five years, 15 million for Bobby Herman, the reigning Cy Young rookie of the year. Uh, Mariano Diaz probably oh, not going to renew his contract. I probably want to get him locked up for a few years, right? He's probably going to be our closer. So four years at under 2 million feels like a good amount for him. He's got tremendous potential. Uh, 1.8. There we go. Yeah, we'll just kind of do 7.2. He's depth. He, uh, what is he closer? I mean, he, he he's going to be in the bullpen, so that'll actually make him happier. He wants to be depth. I expect him to be in the bullpen for us. He's got a potential at 22, um, and, and he's only going to get better. He's 77, getting better. Let's go ahead and sign him for four years, get him until he's 26, arbitration eligible at the end of it. Uh, he'll be actually 25 at the end of it, so... Um, but yeah, one point eight million a year for a quality reliever like this, potentially a star closer uh, towards the end of the deal. Sign me up for that. And then Asa Lacy, I want him in the, I want him in the rotation uh, for sure. I don't really want to give him a ton of money uh, right away, so maybe like a two year, seven hundred eighty thousand dollar deal. I mean, he's super interested in something much less than that. Uh, let's get him to there. All right, nine hundred eighty thousand, so five hundred thousand a year for two years. He is already twenty seven. We just do three years till he's 30. He'll take a 500,000 a year. That's perfect. That That's perfect. He can easily then slot into long reliever if we do go out and get another great pitcher. Uh, it's not going to hurt our salary much. I want him to be in the rotation, but I'm just going to tell him he's going to be depth, so maybe at the end of it he won't be upset. We're currently offering 8.2 million as well. Um, so that leaves us with about 32, uh, 31, 31 and a half million right now. A guy like Lyle Cortez, he had some MLB at bats this past season. Not many. Uh, he is still growing. MJ Melendez, I mean, I can renew his contract and then maybe move him on later. Uh, again, make him an offer. What does he want? He's looking for too much money. And if I if I if I do renew his contract. Uh, I can renew it for 1.2. I feel like that's a waste of money. Uh, Nelson Velasquez, make him an offer. He's still he's looking for 780,000. Probably not. Lyle Cortez, though, 
Definitely want to bring him back. Give him, yeah, we'll give him the three-year uh, $700,000 deal. He wants to be close to home. He is from Missouri, so he is pretty close to home, and he does not want money. He is like, I just need mama's home cooking, and I'm fine. So Lyle Cortez, 66000 a year for the next three years, at least 25, uh, 24. I am perfectly fine with that. The rest of these guys I will take care of. Obviously, guys like Julio Villalobos, we're not going to let them walk. Gavin Cross, James Dunham, right? The, 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 the star players in our system, Max Clark, a potential center fielder, like to see that, that he's growing quite nicely at 22, 70 overall. So things are looking good, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up signing all of these guys or at least offering them a contract, and then we can take a peek at who's out there in free agency. There's a couple great outfielders. Haven't scouted for power yet, but could be exciting. The 40-man is all set. We've offered contracts to pretty much everybody that is of relevance in the system. We are pending $12.7 million in offers our projected surplus is down to 38.9 simply because I, I renewed a contract i believe in there so we lost about 800,000. either way uh if i can do math quickly that should leave us 26.1 million dollars to spend in free agency here and i i gotta find a guy that can just absolutely rake um so i don't care about their fielding i really do not care about fielding i needed a, a strong dh uh, actually, one thing I do I, I did want to do is let's take a look at the trade block. Uh, Ryan Nelson, Jorge Mateo, uh, Brad Keller, Jackson Chorio, and Jonathan Loizica. Um, I mean, Jackson Chorio, a potential right fielder who's really good. I mean, we could see what it would take to get him. He can play second, short, left, and center. So really well-rounded player here. Take a swing on some potential for the future. Oh, he's making $10.2 million for the next five seasons? I don't think so. I don't think I'm willing to wait for that. <laughs> Our outfield is already pretty good. But Ryan Nelson here, um, I don't know, did slot into a starting role this past season uh, in game. Finally, 361 ERA, uh, war 2.3, ERC a 378. He's all right. 79 overall. I'd rather give it to Asa Lacey from within. But I did want to make a trade, see who out there would be willing to give something up for Brandon Drury. Now, I'm okay with whatever. He's 34. Last year of a $9 million deal, our budget will go up to 43.87, so 43.9, uh, nearly 44, and, and we'll see what we can get back. Obviously, we can't make a, a trade for like, oh, wow, we can't. Can we make a trade for Gunnar Henderson? Offer this trade? Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think so. But anyway... I'm just trying to see. I don't think we can trade for players who aren't under contract. Maybe we can. Maybe we can't. I'm going to see what teams offer us, but I do want to get this $9 million off the books. If we get a star player, cool. If we don't, I'll just probably get some good prospects. All right, so I said I wanted to go after somebody with power, and I want to get rid of Drury and Melendez, and I think I might be able to do both of those without touching free agency just yet. So Brandon Drury makes $9 million per season. We're going to get that off the books. MJ Melendez still has got you know, a chance to become an MLB player and... You know, the Red Sox no longer have um, Tyler O'Neill out there in left field, uh, and they are kind of in need of some outfielders. I mean, he's they're going to be their third best outfielder right away. They got Joey Weimer out there in right, and they got Masataki Yoshida uh, out in left, and they got really nobody at center field. They got Sherman Romero, right? I guess that's fair. They took him early, so they got a young player there, but honestly, MJ Melendez probably slots in and gives them a fourth uh, option in the outfield. That's not too bad. Um, and then Brandon Drury, they're seeking second baseman as well. Um, they, their second base, they don't really have anybody. They got Brendan Rogers. I mean, Brandon Drury instantly becomes their number one, um, second baseman. And then at third, they've got Devers. And I think Nate Eaton would be a great, you know, addition with Matthew Batten to kind of be behind him as a utility guy. I, I think they could use a guy that could play everywhere like that. Um, and we would get Tristan Casas because they went out and paid big money for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. last year. They signed him. He's a 96. He's their starting first baseman and they just have Tristan Casas DHing. So if they could use their DH to fill out more spots of their roster where they're, where it's weak, they've got plenty of budget. So the 9 million is not going to hurt Heard him. It's not like they couldn't sign Tristan Casas, but I mean, the, tr the, the the deal is fair. It's just a matter of, can we get Tristan Casas? He's arbitration eligible. I know he's, some of these guys aren't under contract, but let's offer the trade. It's going to be accepted. And now we've got to go negotiate with a new first baseman in Tristan Casas. Now he'll probably be playing every day. And that means Vinny Pasquantino can be the DH uh, or he could be the, the fielder, right? I, I guess they both have the same fielding. Tristan Casas got slightly better arm, but I mean, 
He's got great discipline. His vision's improving. His clutch is solid, right? I, I feel like both of these guys at first base, I mean, he's got power. Like, he, he, they both have power. And especially against lefties, it grew great into the 80s, uh, low 80. He hit 38 home runs there in, in Boston this past season. And he was slugging 513, OPS of 881. It's been above 800 every single season. Just technically there, yes. Uh, but 270s pretty much. I mean, like... His, he strikes out 118, RBIs in the 80s. I mean, this is a guy that could provide the power for us. 111 runs created, 80s in the previous two seasons. 3.2 war, but uh, 15.6 home runs per at-bat. Under 20 pretty much every year, too, which is something we needed. So let's go negotiate with Tristan Casas, see what he's going to want. Uh, he is arbitration eligible. We can offer him arbitration. Uh, I will offer him 3 mil in arbitration, uh, but I can still negotiate with him. Um, so we've offered him arbitration of three mil and he is looking for 11 million for five years. Okay. Uh, I could give him four years at 10. I feel like I'm okay with giving him a little bit extra, uh, f five years. We get him locked up till he's 32, uh, four years. We get him locked up till he's 31. Um, I feel like I'm okay with that. Either one, I think is fine. 11.4 million per year. I I'm okay with this deal. Let's let's go ahead and give him the five years just like that. So hopefully he does sign the contract. He's a great hitter. I don't really have to worry about his fielding or his speed. We're not worried about that, but he does have what we're lacking in power. And that means now we've offered 24 million of our 47 million. So we still have another 23 million that we have available to spend. So let's. T I'm going to take a look at free agency. I think the first thing I want to do is sign a uh, relief pitcher. Probably, not, probably not two. Right? We have. Um, well, we don't really have many relief pitchers right now because they all went to free agency, which is great. But we kind of let them all, all. A lot of them walk too. So we do need to rebuild the bullpen. Uh, we have three relievers and a closer. We're going to need a couple more because um, we're going to do the six starting pitchers, the one closer, and then six relief pitchers. So we have three. We need three. Let's go get them. All right. So I have gone out and offered just two relief pitchers because we already offered a contract to Scott Barlow to bring him back just under three million there. But guys, this is what I meant when I didn't want to give John Schreiber like four to five million is that we are going to try and get Jojo Romero and Jason Adam for five million a year for Jojo Romero and four and a half for just the one year for Jason Adam. I think they both look great. Uh, I think they both are, are very good, good uh, for what we need. I was looking for strikeouts too. Uh, the home runs per nine for Joe. I mean, Jojo Romero would be the gem that we could get, right? He's got a great pitch makeup. The velocity's there. The pitching clutch is at 80. I mean, you want to talk about pitching clutch, Jason Adams, setup man here, or or potential, you know, in a pinch kind of guy. We, we, we'll have plenty of options. Both of them, too, have pitched very, very well. Back-to-back -back seasons in Pittsburgh where Jason Adam pitched sub-3 ERA, um, and then his ERC and FIP both look very, very good. Then we got Jojo Romero, who pretty much every year is at a good ERC. His FIP, you know, has been hit or miss, but uh, you can see minus the first year was 381. It's been a sub two, sub 175 ERA. And, you know, last season was a sub one whip. Um, he's from Cali, so obviously we won't get the be benefit of him being close to home, but. Um, it is what it is. And I guess Jason Adams does have day player quirks, so that's that's nice to see. But those are the three offers we have out there now, still leaving us with about $14 million, um, in in surplus. I don't know if I want to touch that just yet, right? Every I do appreciate the pending offer, so I don't have to remember this in my head. Um, let's take a look at the roster. I, I do want to go through the position, basically figure out the 26-man roster. Right, so we're thinking Gallon, Paddock, Rogers, German, and Lacey, with Daniel Lynch being the long reliever. Right, he signed for uh, this season and next season at 2.8 million. Asa Lacey, he'll be back. He's renewable, and I want to give him a chance uh, to develop. He pitched all right. <laughs> Not great when he was up here, but he's the fifth man in the rotation. Then in the relief pitchers, obviously, we just went after three guys there, uh, but Nick Sandlin and Phil Matten, Jose LeClerc, and Mariano Diaz make up the bullpen. We'll figure out who's the closer, who's the reliever, who's the setup, right? We'll, we'll, we'll do that later, but... We've got our, our six relievers there because um, we we're going to have five natural relievers plus a closer, and then one of these two guys will be the closer. At catcher, we got Furman and Mitchell. I'm okay with that. Uh, we got Cas Casas, who's going to probably play first, and then that leaves Vinny Pasquantino to DH. I think both of these guys, they're great power against righties, and where Vinny Pasquantino doesn't have the power against lefties, 
That's where Casa steps in, but Vinny Pasquantino still does have the contact and the vision, so he can still bat against lefties. They both have similar clutch. Hopefully, they have similar seasons because they look they look like the same player. So we can get we can just double Vinny Pasquantino's uh, performance. I would take that. At second, we got Gorman and Arise. Right? Maybe Arise no longer is the DH, or or maybe Nolan Gorman's no longer. Right? We'll figure that one out. And then at third base, we got Colt Keith with a potential Brooks Lee if we needed more fielding. Colt Keith is definitely the better hitter. He's 83 overall. Brooks Lee, 79 overall, is going to be ready to play in the MLB for the full season next year. And then Bobby Witt at short. Obviously, we know he's he's insane there. And then Brooks Lee, obviously, can play short, second, third. He can kind of play. He's my utility guy defensively and actually has a good bat. Then in the outfield, we got Tyler O'Neill, Tommy Edmond, and Kyle Isbell. Maybe Kyle Isbell is a guy that I can move on from, too. He batted 240, 636. Again, he's more of the fielder. 99 fielding, 99 reaction, 59 speed. Look, he's really good out there. But with 14 million, we might be able to go out and even improve upon a uh, Tommy Edmond or a Tyler O'Neill, right? And make those guys depth, which would be crazy. But we got Verdugo, Green, Edmond, and O'Neill. Um, Isbell's technically in the in the majors right now, but I think I'd like to have just five outfielders. I don't think I need six outfielders. So I'm going to take a look at what's out there. There's some really big names out there. And we'll see if maybe we can upgrade. But Riley Green is currently our star outfielder and is hopefully going to get better. He's 26. The rest of the guys are in their 30s. So maybe we can find somebody that matches up that timeline a little bit better. All right. So I did some math about the roster construction. And I don't think Brooks Lee would be able to make it to the roster again. Tristan Casas and, you know, um, even with Brandon Drury leaving, Tristan Casas means two first basemen, two catchers. Uh, we'd have two second basemen with a rise. Uh, we've got Bobby Witt Jr. We've also got um, Colt Keith. And I want to have five outfielders, and I need to have 13 total fielders. That would that would mean that, uh, that Brooks Lee doesn't make the roster yet again. And at 26, at 79, he's in the last year of his deal. He's going to be renewable, so it's not the end of the world. But we're going to send him closer to home to Oakland, where they just, they need a lot, guys. There's so much, they're just in so much trouble. Harrison Alonzo's not going to help them win any games right now. I mean, he actually, sorry, I shouldn't say that. He is going to definitely help them win games right now. But I felt like Verdugo and Lee, um, and then a potential player in Dave Young, I'm just going to get him out of there, man. I'm getting Harrison Alonzo out of Oakland. He's that stud outfield that we saw them draft a few years ago. You know, he had one season. He was already in the mid-70s. I hate to see that power against lefties go down by 10 points in a single season. But I feel like putting him in a, a, re, a real organization like ours uh, is going to help him. And it helps us balance out the numbers, right? So we'd have... Two catchers, two first basemen, two second basemen, a short and a third. It gives us eight infielders, which then could we could have five outfielders with Green, O'Neal, Edmund, uh, Harrison Alonzo, um, I believe, and then and then Kyle Isbell, right? I, I maybe I could give them Isbell instead. Oh, they'd be interested in Isbell over Verdugo. I mean, Verdugo is making eight million though, although he was great. Um, he would just take he would take time away from Harrison Alonzo for sure, and I don't know how much of a an asset he really is anymore. I mean, he, he was solid for us, and he had th that great home run, but, um, you know, his war is sub-2 now. He's starting to get his role diminished. Um, his OPS was still very, very good, so I think he's still a really, really good player, but to get a potential star in Harrison Alonzo who can play out there with Riley Green for the next five years and potentially take over Ty Tommy Edmond or, or for Tyler O'Neill, right? He could literally go play left next season after playing with us for a season. Uh, Edmond's got another three seasons after this one. I mean, that could be our outfield. Could be Alonzo, Edmond, and Green. And I I'm fine with Isbell, right? He's not. He's a terrible bat, but I'm going to need somebody who can field because Edmond... He can field. O'Neal is a decent fielder, and Riley Green, you know, is also a decent fielder. But Isbell, I feel like, is just uh, he's he's good against lefties too. We don't really have that in the outfield, do we? We don't really have somebody who can really crush lefties. I mean, obviously Riley Green can hit against both, but Isbell is there if we needed somebody off the bench to hit against lefties. So I feel like Isbell, Edmund, O'Neal, Green, and then Alonzo is a perfect outfield five. 
Alonzo then can probably play more than Kyle Isbell can. And I I'm very, very, you know, it'd be awesome to get a potential player like Harrison Alonzo to the team. He's only 5'7", 165, small, small strike zone. But again, in the outfield, I'd like to see him a little bit bigger, but I don't care. He's 22, 78, a potential. I can get him for Brooks Lee, who's 26, 79, a potential. So we're losing out a little bit there. But Verdugo is going to help them out too. I don't know. The Athletics just need something. I don't know what their manager is doing over there. They're just acquiring a bunch of guys. Like, they have so many players in the 70s and 60s. Like, maybe go out and try getting some more of, of, of these guys in the 80s. Like, Asturi Ruiz. So, I, I don't know. I'm going to do the deal, though. I think it's going to be fun, and I, I'm looking forward to it. So, Brooks Lee, unfortunately, we made the trade for him. He never really grew as quickly as I would have hoped. Maybe it's down to playing time. Maybe it's due to the fact that he's mostly a fielder and not a hitter, but... You know, right now, I think this makes sense for us. So I'm going to go ahead and make this deal. Thank you, Oakland. And welcome to the Royals, Harrison Alonzo. I'm, I'm excited. I got to get him under contract, but things are looking pretty good. So a lot of the guys we are offering contacts to are going to return. Scott Barlow, Bobby Herman signs the five-year $15 million deal. Tristan Casas signed his deal. Harrison Alonzo signed the deal. Lyle Cortez is back. Uh, Mariano Diaz is back for the four-year deal. I mean, guys, we are locking up the core. There's not a lot of free agency moves that I want to make right now. I mean, there are players in free agency. We could go get a ridiculous starting pitching core, but I, I, I do want to make sure we have we are conscious of guys like Julio Villalobos or James Dunham in a couple years coming up and being ready. Ben Caderna is only 24. Asa Lacey is going to be ready this year. We'll just move him to the MLB right now. Why the heck not? Right, we we plan on using him now, so uh, we'll put him in the rotation with Daniel Lynch again in the long reliever spot. Uh, our rota our bullpen's looking pretty good with Sandlin Adams signed, Matten and Barlow's back. We've got Mariano Diaz back. Right, like things are looking well, and I don't want to go ahead and spend a ton of money just to spend a ton of money. Um, our pending offers are about six. We have twenty eight million in surplus. Maybe that'll be a bad thing that I'm not just going to go splashing on on Dustin May for for a while, or, or go out and get Tristan McKenzie and steal him from the Cleveland Guardians. I guess that actually isn't a bad idea to go after him and make sure that he can't uh, pitch against us here. I mean, he's been really, I mean, he's been really an, uh, amazing pretty much every year he's pitched. But again, I would like to keep ourselves, uh, you know, a little bit more flexible, right? I, I feel like we've been getting into the, the weeds here of potentially not having the flexibility to, to utilize uh, certain players, but man, could get McKenzie too. We'd have gallon, uh, oh God, Chris Paddock, uh, Trevor Rogers and Tristan McKenzie. And then you have Bobby Herman locked up. I mean, that would be just an insane, insane starting pitching core. What we needed more of is hitting. So, I mean, we could go after Adolis Garcia. He's not the best hitter. Jazz Chisholm is actually a really good hitter. Um, a solid, solid player here. 5.8 war. Runs created of 100 back-to-back -back years. Ha Young Kim, if we wanted a short, but we already have one, right? I just don't think the numbers make as much sense. And I still want to give some chances to some of the younger guys, too. I want to see what potentially Asa Lacey can do uh, in the majors. But, oh, man, Asa Lacey. I mean, he's 77. He's all right. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm going after him. I Screw it. I'm going after him. Starting pitchers, probably, I probably want to go after Tristan McKenzie. Dustin May has pitched well pretty much every year, but what is he going to ask for? Five years, six years, 100 million is not getting the job done. He's asking for about the same amount. He wants to be the ace at 90 overall. I mean, back-to-back -back years here, I mean, he only pitched 50 innings, must have gotten hurt in that first year. Uh, 2.78 and a 3.20 strikeouts per nine. I mean, do we, I think I kind of want a guy with more strikeouts here. Um, is, is this, that's one of the things that we are kind of lacking, right? 8.3 for Freddie Peralta. So he would do the job. He just hasn't pitched phenomenally. I can't say he's pitched poorly, but Rasmussen, not a strikeout guy at all. But then there is Tristan McKenzie, who is a strikeout guy and we could steal him from within the, the division at 29. He doesn't have any quirks. I wonder how much quirks will impact uh, some of these guys. So I guess not too much. There's Crochet here. Uh, he's 27. He's pitched pretty poor in Chicago. Jesus Luzardo. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, Brady Singer, Luis Garcia, Kevin Gaussman, but he's 36. So I'm going to go with Tristan McKenzie, and we're just going to have a ridiculous pitching rotation. He is going to be in the rotation, so I am going to break his heart there a little bit. I'll give him $16.5 million per year for five years. Four years. Four years? It barely moves it. Let's give him sixteen a mil. $16 mil a year for four years to be in the rotation. He would take that offer, and we'd still have about $7 million in, in cap space available. So 
I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it. We're gonna go after Tristan McKenzie. Why not? And there we have it, guys. We got Tristan McKenzie, and now our pitching rotation is un. Real. I mean, we got 87s and then the reigning rookie of the year, Cy Young, Bobby Herman. Whew. All right. We're looking really good here. Jojo Romero still hasn't signed. We had to up our offer. The Dodgers came in. We had to offer a little bit more. Colorado came in. He likes them too. We're offering him five and a half for four years. I feel like he's worth it. If he's not, I feel like he's a reliever we could easily move on from. Uh, he, he looks good enough and he'll be valuable to other teams. Our projected surplus right now is 10.9. We're offering 5.5. So 5.4 million in projected surplus, I think, is going to be perfectly fine uh, for our upcoming season. We don't have any arbitration to do. Um, tendering contracts, Nelson Velasquez. I mean, we could bring him back. I actually don't want to do that. Actually, 780,000. He's decent organizational depth. I mean, he actually wants way less than that, too. So uh, I, I'm just going to bring it back. 630 is not bad. I'll, I'll bring, I think, a couple of these guys back. Probably not all of them, but like Eric Calderon here. Sure, he can come back. Anybody that doesn't want much money can come back. So the Blue Jays just went out and made two big trades for starting pitchers. They go after Garrett Whitlock from the Red Sox, as well as Mikey Com uh, Romero in exchange for Matt Kaminsky. And they also acquire Luis Castillo from the Mariners for a bunch of uh, younger prospecty players. I mean, the Blue Jays... I mean, they 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 must they must uh, you know be upset about losing in the World Series like that um, because they went out and they just got uh, just really good. Garrett Whitlock at 86, Luis Castillo at 89. So they are they are loading up that starting rotation. They saw us load up. They they know they got to contend with us. Philly knocked them out of the the World Series, obviously, and and you know. Um, so they are loading up. I had to bring you back for that. Jojo Romero is is really getting a bidding war because he's like the last decent relief pitcher out there. Um, and and I, I really just, I, I want to get him because he'll be a stud in our bullpen, I feel like, at 85 too. So he'll be very, very solid. All right, things are starting to get crazy. There's been a bunch of trades and I have not popped in for all of them, but Pete Alonso goes to Tampa Bay. I figured I had to say this one because they were the one seed this year. They give up uh, Kyan Hernandez and Thomas Steiner, two Low, young 20s, low 70 overall for Polar Bear Pete. Oh, man, he makes the switch from the NL East to the AL East, and we now have to deal with him much more frequently. Really don't like how strong um, our our our, uh, our conference is getting, our league, the AL, is getting, right? Um, the Braves have acquired Kyle Wright, Michael Walker. Uh, it just, yeah, uh, I believe the... Uh, the Twins also signed a very good pitcher. Where where are the Twins? Um, oh, God, lots of signings. They signed Reese McGuire, which I guess is not a huge deal, but uh, where are they? The the Twins. Where are the Twins? Show, there, there, there's, there's the Twins. They went out and got Drew Rasmussen for five years as well. So they are – we, uh, we are in for it this year. I feel like last year was a down year for the whole division, and they're all trying to make up for it. Uh, hopefully our additions are enough to combat that. And finally, it's done. I can stop checking to see if we got outbid because JoJo Romero is going to finally sign the dang contract and join the Kansas City Royals. Guys, we look very, very good right now. I am pumped. Um, you know, look at the starting pitching. It's Gallon, McKenzie, Paddock, Rogers, Derman, uh, Herman, I should say, and then Daniel Lynch. Uh, relief pitchers, we've got Romero, Sandlin, Adam, Matten, Barlow, as well as LeClerc and Diaz. Um, we've got Freddie Furman and then Blake Mitchell. Jeff Tanaka is looking really, really good as a prospect pitcher. He's growing tremendously. I believe he was in like the 50s or maybe even the 40s when we drafted him. He's now at, at, at 20. He's 63. Costas and Pasquantino. And we've got Nick Prado still down here if we need him. And Ray Enriquez uh, in, in, in the pipeline. We've got Nolan Gorman in a rise there. Michael Massey's in the pipeline. we got Colt Keith. Here at third base, why don't we just move him to the MLB now? Um, starting pitchers will move Asa Lacey back down to AAA. Yes, there we go. I was worried it was going to use like an option or I'd have to wave him like it's the offseason. Anyway, third base, we got Colt Keith at short. We got Bobby Witt. Uh, we got O'Neal, Edmund Isbell, and uh, Green and Alonzo. Like, we are looking very, 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 very good for now and the future. So hopefully this is the year that we can finally climb the mountain, get to the World Series, and potentially win the whole dang thing and we've officially made it up to spring training all set and ready to go taking a look at the depth chart i mean the pitching rotation is just stupid good uh catcher is amazing we're you know we've got the fifth best rotation in the league the 12th best catcher the sixth best first base 
Uh, second base, Nolan Gorman. I, I, it's just it's probably not set up yet. I was going to say he's not playing, but Nolan Gorman would be playing normally. Uh, Bobby Witt's the second best shortstop in baseball. Colt Keith, 15th at third there. O'Neal, fifth best uh, center or left fielder. Harrison Alonzo is platooning with Tommy Edmond and Riley Green out there in right. Not to mention we have the best bullpen in baseball and Pasquantino and Gorman are switching up who's hitting uh, against what uh, handedness. I bet you Pasquantino's pit, uh, hitting against lefties. Um, actually, he might be hitting against righties, and Gorman might be hitting against lefties. I'd like to see Gorman playing every day, uh, but he's a guy that we took a swing on. We gave up some assets for him. Maybe somebody that we need to move on from because he has not hit the highs that we had expected of him. He does have plenty of quirks. Was an all-star, but hopefully he can keep that momentum going. But guys... This team is looking good. Number one overall. We just don't have any speed, but first in contact, second in power, first in pitching, 13th in defense. So the defense is still there as well. We just lost out a little bit of speed, but we traded it in for some big time power. $211 million is the team salary. And that is that for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one. It's a free for all, free for all.